Man, them witches are outside tonight. Now that sentence right there that I just gave, that's you in the future. You're going to be looking out and you're going to be able to actually see. The veil is going to be pulled back and you're going to actually get to see how the witch is out here tonight. Now, it's very interesting the dream that I had because I got invited into a different realm only to realize it's not about being invited into a different realm. In this case, it was a secret witch's coven. It wasn't about getting into that realm, watching and witnessing that realm. It was about what I found when I was in that realm. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to have a, an epiphany, an awakening moment, a, a, a download, a lightning strike. It's going to come and it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks the way it did in this dream. There have been far too many precious gifts that were given to you, that were on the way to you, that have been intercepted or even worse, stolen from you. And you want to know what adds insult to injury to this whole thing? The simple fact that every single time it looks like it appears to be all your fault. Now I'm always here to take accountability for my own actions. But what's been revealed to me over these last few months is that we're always fighting an invisible war. There's always something after your stuff, your livelihood, your money, your family, your friends. Everything that is of value to you is of even extra value to something else or someone else, maybe here or in a different realm. Now I'm going to be sharing this dream with you guys. And I'm telling you, it's a little, you know, all of my dreams are a little weird and each of them is special in its own way, but I'm not just going to share this dream. I'm going to also share the confirmation that I got to go with this dream as I was really trying to make sure, uh, are you sure you want me to tell this one? So I'm going to tell you the dream. And then of course I'm going to break it all down and tell you how it could possibly apply to your life. So ladies and gentlemen, let us get into this dream. So you're in your car and you are the driver. Now there are three other people in the car with you. Four people total. You're driving. There's someone in the passenger seat and two people in the back seat. Now, as you are driving, somehow your vision switched and you were sitting in the back seat. You were no longer the driver. Suddenly someone said, watch out. And when they said, watch out, you flip back to being the driver. Now, suddenly you were back in the driver's seat and it was too late to hit the brakes before you slammed into the car in front of you. And you, you thought for a second, wait a minute, I thought I was in the back seat. I forgot I was driving. How could I forget that I was driving? So you get out of the car and you go to check on the person who was in front of you. Now, when you get out of the car, you begin to walk to the front of your car since he was in front of you. But all of a sudden you heard, Hey, I'm over here. And you turned around and looked, and the person that you hit, you ran into the back of their car. They were now behind you. So you turn around and you're like, how did they get behind me? If I hit them from in front of me and, and you're trying to figure it out, but you can't, but the guy is walking up to you and you're asking him, Hey, how are you? You know, did I cause any damage to your car? He said, yeah, well you did cause a dent to the back of my car. And again, you're trying to figure out if I hit the back of your car, then how did you end up behind me? And so he's like, so yeah, you know, and you're asking him like, well, are you okay? Is your body hurt? Did you break any bones? Did I, you know, hurt you physically? And he was like, oh no, no, I'm all good. But the investigator is on the way. And you said, oh, you called an investigator? He was like, yep. So you started to think to yourself, like, I hope, I hope my stuff is okay. I hope my, my registration is okay. And this and that, and you're just trying to go through a checklist in your mind. All of a sudden you're worried and you're on pins and needles because you know, the investigator is on the way. And since the car accident was your fault, you were thinking, man, it would be so embarrassing if I got my car taken away in front of these people and they were going somewhere with me and it would be so embarrassing. You know, you were just worried about a lot of different things. 
So you step to this uh, part of the building because you guys had got out. You went to a building, trade information. And then you went to this part of the building where it was a rail. And you just sat against the rail. And then you saw this woman running down the sidewalk. She threw a broom in the air and kind of had like this head start. And then she jumped on it. And when she jumped on it, she flew to the sky. And you looking at her like, man, that go a witch. And when you saw her fly to the sky... When your eyes made it to the sky, you saw that there were two more witches flying around. And he was like, man. And then one of the people who was in the car with you originally walked up to the side of you. And you looked at them and said, man, these witches out here tonight. And so another woman had ran on the sidewalk and she threw her broom up, caught a head start, kind of like a skateboard. Throw it out there, let it roll, and then you run and jump on it. That's how they deal with their brooms. So as you are watching these witches fly through the sky, you're like, it's a lot of witches out tonight. And they're coming out of this cloud. Now, all of them have on black capes, but some of them have like on the inside of their capes, you can see some of them have pink. Some of them have purple representing like their different rankings. And so they're coming in and out of this cloud. And the only way for them to get to the cloud is to jump on their brooms and fly up there. And the only way for them to get down is to get on their brooms and come back down to earth. Suddenly, you began to rise. And some way, somehow, because the person who was in the car with you was standing next to you, you were able to bring them up too. So both of you guys rose and you made it to the cloud. Now, when you got into the cloud, baby, this was the witch's coven layer. This was day house. And honey, darling, was it fabulous, okay? It was plush furniture and all of this like velvet and velour and it was just so beautiful crystal chandeliers and there were these rich greens and these royal golds and these purples and fuchsias and turquoises like all of these rich lavish luxurious elegant furniture and the curtains and the drapes baby don't get me started completely fabulous you keep walking and in this glass case, there's this sparkling, magical looking jacket. And for whatever reason, when you got close to it, the vase was able to open up and you were able to put your hands on it. And then you rub some of the sequins and the rhinestones. You was like, man, I remember when I used to wear this jacket. Next thing you know, the show begins. Up at this clear glass elevator is a mega superstar, a huge R&B singer on our planet. And I'm not going to mention her name and no, it's not Beyonce, but this huge megastar R&B singer is at the top of where this elevator is in a clear glass elevator wearing your jacket. And they begin to slowly come down and all of the witches are screaming and clapping and the witch gets off the elevator, famous R&B singer. And she goes up to the stage. She begins to sing with your jacket on. And as she's up there, you walk right up to the stage front and center and you looking at her right in her face and she's so uncomfortable. She's making all kind of weird, cringy faces. She's not able to stand and move the way that looks natural. And she's still trying to put on one of the best performances of her life. And as you're watching her in that jacket, you like, man, that's my jacket. And then it hits you like a ton of bricks. You was like, hold up. You start looking around like this. I knew, I knew this plush furniture. I knew these colors. I knew this whole little extravagant. All of this is my stuff. This is all my stuff. And it started to hit you. Each and every single thing in this witch's lair was yours. Then it starts to hit you again. Wait a minute. So what about when I was driving in my car and I had that switch where I was suddenly in the backseat and I didn't know I was the driver. Then all of a sudden I had a car accident. Mm, the witches. So as you're standing there looking around the room, realizing that all of this stuff is yours. And because you didn't voluntarily give it to them, that means they stole it. Everything from the jacket that this girl is wearing to all of this plush, beautiful furniture, the chandeliers, the drapes, the fabulousness, the luxuriousness, this is all mine. And all you could think was one thing. I'm about to take all my stuff back. Ooh, ladies and gentlemen. Do you feel the 
blood boiling. Some of you guys have had things taken from you that were not for other people. Now we could be talking about spiritually speaking. And like I was saying earlier, blessings that were on the way to you being intercepted, or maybe people stepping in front of opportunities or blocking other people who were going to reach out to you some kind of way, some kind of way, somehow there has been an entire world built off your back. And for some of you guys, it's because maybe you had things and you gave them up. Maybe you were too tired to fight for your stuff, for your, for your dreams. Okay. Whatever the case may be, there was an opening and these witches have been operating and they've been taking and they've been building and creating worlds based off what you've left behind or what you didn't keep or fight for. You know, so I'm going to break this dream down and I got a lot of, lot of revelations for this dream. First of all, let me show y'all this. Um, when I was, when I first had this dream, I was like, okay, cool. I already know it's going to be a few days. I'm gonna have to let it marinate. You know, I'm gonna wait for the, all the revelations to roll in and then I'm gonna do one video. Right. And so, uh, I tried to do the video a different day and I could not get it out. I could not get it out. But then this morning I was told, okay, boom, you ready. You ready to tell this dream. And I'm like, okay, I need some confirmation on that though. Like, so if, you know, if you're really ready for me to tell this dream about these witches, I need a sign. Give, please give me a sign. Please give me a confirmation. And let me show you what I saw literally five minutes after asking, like, okay, you sure you want me to tell this one? This is what I saw. Take a look at this. Ditch witch. Say what? Okay, so uh, that was my sign. That was my confirmation. It's time to tell the dream about the witches. Now, a lot of you guys, uh, I know that sometimes when we speak about the spirit realm, some of it can seem, oh, witches and all oh, warlocks. Yeah, yeah, whatever. What are ghosts and demons and ghouls and goblins? Hoo ha, it's gonna be Halloween. But a lot of the times, the reason why we are so defenseless is because we don't believe that it's real. And our stuff just be getting taken and taken. And we be trying to figure out what's going on. What am I supposed to do? How can you defend yourself if you don't know what's attacking you? Where it's coming from? Imagine fighting a ghost. Every time you swing, you miss. But then you get bopped upside the back of your head. It's like, dude, if I could see what's really going on, then maybe I got a better chance of protecting my stuff and laying down the law. You know, setting my boundaries, setting up some traps. You come over here, you're going to get zapped, whatever. However you're going to do it, okay? But you have to know what it is. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be breaking it down. We're going to be exposing these witches. And I really honestly thought God was done giving me the witch dreams. But every time, I'm going to tell you, man, it's crazy. Because every time I get around a certain group of individuals, I have a dream about witches. And it's starting to make me think, like, hmm, what you trying to really tell me? Okay? And it's it's crazy because I start putting two and two together. And it's like, ugh. Yikes. Okay. But anyway, today you guys are going to be choosing witches and, uh, you're going to get your messages based on those. We're going to start over here. Then we're going to take it over to Patreon and, um, get the rest of the revelations. You dig? So choose your witch and I will see you guys in the messages. All right. If you chose number one, I'm going to have to let this marinate. I'm going to have to let this marinate. Okay. You got the car, right? But there's several different components that we have to talk about with this car. Because first of all, you're driving the car. The car and dreams represent like your mission, your life purpose, uh, your group or your ministry. It represents uh, your career path, okay? It's where you're going in life, okay? The thing that's going to carry you through life. And the thing about it is you're in a driver's seat because in this car, you got other people whose like destiny or their purpose is connected with yours. So they are in the car with you. However, you are the driver. This is the thing. See, the witches are watching. They over there on their brooms and you in the car and you know, you got the cover over the car. So you can't necessarily see the witches, but they flying over your head. And because you are headed somewhere, because you are going somewhere, one of their goals is to delay you, to stop you. So how do they trick you? This is what they do, just like in the car. Sometimes they lead you to believe you're not important. You're not a leader. You're not in the driver's seat. Nobody else's destiny is connected to yours. You don't have to put your pedal to the metal and, and push forward. This is not your path. And so in the dream, how you got put from the driver's seat to now you felt like you were one of the people in the back seat, 
This was an illusion that was painted over your eyes. So some of you guys need to hear it. Yes, you are the leader. Yes, you are the one that God chose. Yes, you are in the driver's seat. Yes, there are other people who are, you know, depending on you to make it because if you make it, they make it too. But if you don't make it just like in the dream, nobody went anywhere. Everybody got delayed. If the witches can delay you, they delay everybody. So what are they doing right now to delay you? Tricking you to believe in that you're not that important. Tricking you into believing that you don't have a destiny. You don't have a purpose. You're not moving forward with nothing. No, no, it's okay. You don't have to do nothing. Just, you know, you're worthless. Your life isn't anything. You know, you'll never be anything. It's okay. Whole time. You taking your eye off the road, you not knowing that you're in the driver's seat, this is what causes the crash. It's the distraction. So they're tricking you and they're causing distractions. Okay, so if you got the car, yes, you are the driver, right? If you got the car, yes, you are in charge of those other people getting to where they need to be. So that's what I give it number one. Let's get to the next one. Okay, so if you chose number two, you got filing false reports okay let me explain so you remember in the dream after the crash you got out of the car and you went to go check on the other passenger okay in the dream world car accidents can represent sometimes threats okay this is what i was getting you were in the same lane as someone else you existing you showing up you popping up out of nowhere has put a dent in someone else's operation remember we're talking about cars so the cars represent your life purpose your ministry uh your career path some of you guys have the same calling on your life as some other people but instead of people wanting to share the lane they get this possessive energy this is my lane and you can't come in it right so um the thing that I was getting with that too was God was like, who's lane? Because nobody created these lanes. Like if you look at the street sign, it doesn't say their name. Okay. Multiple people are going to have the same purpose, the same calling. But sometimes people can see the other cars as a threat. You could potentially cause a dent in my ministry because you showed up. This is the thing. Remember in the dream, you hit them from the back right? But when you got out of the car, they were behind you. For some of you guys, you have people complaining that you caused the dent in their operation when the whole time you were ahead of them anyway. They're, give, they're painting the same illusion. Remember when number one, the witches were in the spirit realm painting illusions. And in the flesh world, they are using people to have that same energy. They want to paint illusions in your face. So essentially the accident wasn't your fault. It was someone crying and playing victim because when you went to look at their car, there was no dent and they were behind you. So you couldn't have even hit them again. This is translating as you were already doing your thing. And someone comes along, you copied off of me. Oh, how dare you go ahead of me? How dare you surpass me? So you know what I'll do? I'll file a false report. This is where the false reports come in. I'm going to go say that you did this and you did that and you lied and you cheated and you scammed and there's no way that God is using you and there's no way that you're a part of this ministry. You shouldn't be in this lane. I'm calling the investigator, right? Because in, in the real world, if you get into accident, you're going to call the police. But in a dream, that word investigator was very specific, okay? There was an investigator. I mean, somebody's going to do some digging. Somebody's going to look beneath the surface. They're going to really go into it, right? So for some of you guys, you may have had people report you on social media for no reason. Some of y'all had people calling the people to come tell, oh, she ain't taking care of her kids. She ain't doing right by her kids. Next thing you know, you getting a knock on your door. So they may see you get in the head in that lane and it causes a threat. Okay. So car accidents, uh, represent in some cases, something being a threat. Okay. So the false reports again is, is people saying things that aren't necessarily true because from their perspective, they may be a victim. Okay. And again, it's all stemming from people who are being used to help do the same thing that the witches did, which is trick you into believing that you are worse than you are or that you you cause accidents and you're doing all these bad things because people are perceiving you and saying these 
bad things. And it's all a part of the illusions and the trickery to, again, make you stop. Because now since this person felt victimized, you hit me and you caused the dent. Now, in turn, I'm going to call the investigator. So now what? That's even more delay. Even though there's no dent in the car, nobody got hurt. Nope. I'm going to make you sit here and wait. And it's come kind of like in a way, I want you to be stalled, but they have to wait too. So they, they can delay themselves just to delay you too. Because in some way they feel like, well, maybe if the investigator has them on pause, then I can say, all right, officer, thank you for the report. And then I can get back in my car and I can speed ahead of them. Okay, take that how it applies literally in life, right? If I can get them to slow down, if I can get them put in jail, if I can get them arrested, if I can get their car taken away, if I can get them evicted, if I can get them to do this and this, then I can get ahead of them, okay? That kind of energy, I know it's very, very low vibrational, but again, what I was telling you at the beginning, you, you tired of fighting ghosts. You want to know what you're really up against. And this is the type of stuff that they do. Okay. So that's what I get for number two. Let's go ahead and let's get to the last one. Them witches is out here tonight. They out chill. Okay. This is the thing. If you chose number three, of course you got the witches right? They start off as, you know, just people walking up the street. And then next thing you know, they throw out their broom like a skateboard. They let it glide a little bit and then they run and they jump on it and boom, they fly to the sky. Okay. So this is the first discovery of what may be going on. Or for some of you guys, this is your, your first clue. It's like the witches may have caused the delay. The witches may have caused the distraction. The witches may have used and orchestrated other people to create more and more delay for you. But in the process, they gave you a moment to stop and to actually see what was going on. Some of you guys are about to get the spiritual privilege to see, to not just see these witches flying in, in the air, but to have the calm sense and energy to deal with it. Because in the dream, you were not scared at all. And it was so amazing to you because usually the witches be messing with people, but it's like they wasn't even checking for you. <laughs> Little did you know why. It's like they weren't even paying attention to you. But it was only because, you know, they had already done a bunch of stuff. And at this point, it's like, you already detained. What else can, what else can we do from here? We're going to let you marinate. And you know what I'm saying? We're going to let you marinate right there as we go in and out of our beautiful, lavish, uh, layer. But in the meantime, this is your hint, your clue. The veil was peeled back. There was nothing distracting you. You saw exactly what you saw. Furthermore, you had one person, which means out of the three people in that car, there's at least one other person who is going to have this supernatural ability with you. You and this person are going to have the veil ripped off your eyes together and you will be able to see into another realm or you and this person may connect on a different type of spiritual level. Okay. You and this person may have some type of uh, connection in the astral realm. And therefore on this planet, you have the same spiritual gifts. So at least one other person was able to witness this thing with you. But, uh, there's a lot, there was a lot of witches in this dream. And the thing about it is they were coming down. They had on their different colors, they, which was representing their different rankings. So some of you guys don't even understand that the reason why these things are so slick and so tricky is because they are very, very high ranked. You ever met a really, really good manipulator? Hey, have you ever watched a uh, you? On Netflix, that type, you know, operating those type of people. And, and it's so slick and it's so crafty that you won't catch it. But what these witches didn't account for was that as they had you delayed, that would give you the time that you need to not only see them, but to learn what was really going on. It's like they had to expose themselves. If they're going to delay you, they have to expose themselves. And if people on this earth are going to delay you, they're going to have to delay themselves too. So that's all you needed to know. So I'm dealing with some witches. Okay. And y'all trying to y'all after this and y'all want to do that. And y'all trying. Okay, cool. And then all these other people are supposed to go with me. And you got me out here looking bad. Like I ain't doing what I'm supposed to do. You got me out here crashing my car and it all looks like it's your fault. And so for some of you guys in your life every day, and I, you know, I tell you, I told you this earlier, take accountability for your part, right? I kept saying, but God, I was driving, 
right? It was, it's all my fault, right? I got to take accountability. It was my fault. I crashed into him and all this and that. And it's like, but do you really know what you're up against? Do you know why you got distracted? Do you know why you felt like you were in the backseat for a moment? You know what I'm saying? These witches, they are good. And the thing about it is the reason why they're multiplying and multiplying and multiplying is because when one witch goes up into that cloud and they have that layer, which is your stuff, and probably a collection of other people's stuff that they've been stealing from since whoever amount of time, all of these witches are seeing, you know, they're coming back down to earth and other people are seeing them. And it's like, man, y'all living good. Y'all looking good. Y'all got this. Y'all got that. I want that too. So they're multiplying and increasing by the numbers, by the droves. And the more of them there are, the more that they're stealing from the people who are, you know, supposed to be in those positions or who have places to go and things to be. It's like the currency to get into that cloud is to take from somebody else down here. Right. And this is how they get those riches. OK, so if you chose number three, understand you got these witches, different ranks, different levels they have been taking and then Add insult to injury, you sitting there feeling like the worst human in the world, like, man, I crashed into somebody or man, somebody out to get me because, and then you questioning yourself, the psychological warfare that they inflict and wage on people is real. These witches be inflicting psychological warfare. Ain't nothing worse than doing something and then trying to figure out later on, how did I do that? What, what was I thinking? Well, it happened so fast, but I thought, and you trying to explain and you trying to figure it out and it's super Super, super frustrating. So I'm here today to, yes, you have to take accountability. Yes, you've messed up and you've made plenty of mistakes in your life, but sometimes it be them witches and you got to stay prayed up, you know, get your spiritual warfare on and be in tune and be alert because that's real. You dig? So that's what I get for number three. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. All right, now, y'all, it goes a little bit deeper, okay? We're going to take it over to Patreon. I got to break down some more elements of this drink. So click the link in the description box. Head on over to Patreon and get the rest of these vibes right now. But if this is where it ends for you, thank you so much for watching. And please take heed to what I'm telling you, okay? Some of you guys are going to find much relief when you start praying in your spiritual warrior way and these things are having to get up off of you, okay? They're going to have to stop orchestrating the events and they're going to have to stop using people close to you to help them carry out these missions of delaying you, okay? And confusing you and causing distractions and having people file false reports okay you catching it and you dealing with it and not only that you about to get back all your stuff okay so congratulations yes congratulations you getting back your stuff so thank you so much for watching once again go ahead subscribe to the channel i would love to have you as one of my subscribers and um yeah i'll see y'all in the next video